What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do an update video on my car. It's been a while since I've done an update video and I wanted to share with you guys some of the cool stuff that's been going on behind the scenes and some of the unfortunate, disappointing stuff that's also been going on behind the scenes. So I just think it's really important that I share my experience with you guys so you know what to look for in the future so hopefully you don't go through what I did and learn the lessons that I've had to learn. So let's dive into it. All right, welcome back. I'm so excited for this one. I've been waiting for this for a little while now. Uh, I got a new package I want to show you guys, so let's get into it. I'll go ahead and get this assembled and then we'll talk about it. Here we go. All right, so this is now set up and let's go over it quickly. Uh, this is a BPA exhaust manifold. It's 321 stainless steel, including the downpipe. Um, the collector is made out of billet. That looks so good. Alex with BPA does amazing work. I cannot recommend him enough. If you're looking for an exhaust manifold that's really high quality, he is the guy to go to. I went with dual wastegate setup per his recommendation per response. So we got Turbo Smart 45 Gen 5s. Those are sick. And then for the turbo setup, it is a Garrett G35 900. I'm really excited to hear this on my car. Cool. And so to follow that up, I actually went ahead and picked up a Hypertune manifold to complement that. All right, here's a video of the transmission before shipping it off. So I found a guy in England named Paul Cheshire. He actually restores the V160s and a lot of other stuff. He does some amazing work. He's one of the few people that actually take on a V160 and restore them and fix them, get them running, and not only that, he makes them look better than they are new. Um, he handled all of the shipping for me, uh, the pricing, on the work that he did at the time was extremely reasonable considering the parts for this transmission are now dis discontinued and all that was left for me to do was just box it up and send it to him hey so i've got your uh, v160 here stripped down i'm just going to talk you through uh, a few bits and bobs what i found and what's good what's not uh what i can do to help and um yeah also basically um this is reverse gear all, all the gears as such the the teeth the main drive teeth are all good it's quite common for the input shaft and the counter gear to wear on the tips of the teeth which will cause it to whine in every gear other than fifth um but there's, there's no damage to any of the teeth in regards to which would cause a whine. So that's good. Uh, you can tell it's not had a hard life. Uh, right, so reverse gear. The synchro is good. See, when they're new, this is the gear, this is the synchro. These are flush when they're new, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's basically still flush. So that's good to go again. No, no concern with that. First gear. Um, you can see it's ever so slightly down not horrendous it would still work absolutely fine like this the only thing is with this is the early type so it's got the the smaller oil grooves the later type hold on i'll grab one the later type has less oil grooves but they're deeper so it's much better for colder you know when you start the car up in the mornings uh with this type you need to wait for the oil to get warm before it will shift nice this later type helps that um, in a hotter climate you probably won't notice it too much but certainly here in Europe and in the winter if you're driving it on these ones um, with the cool oil it, it does make them a bit stiff in the morning and that, that frees them up uh, so if you wanted to replace that friction ring that is the same part on first second third and fourth in in the insides we can replace all of them it's not a problem uh right so second gear same story a little bit under flush not too bad 
but I'm quite surprised to see second gear's got quite a bit of damage there. You can see on the dog, the dog teeth. As you said, it, it shifted quite nicely, but as you can see there, it's damaged all the way around. Um, not to say I don't believe you, but I'm quite surprised that it shifted nicely um, with that like that. And then in turn, the, the sleeve which locates onto the gear, so you can see the side which locates onto first is like brand new. The side which locates onto second, and they're all rounded off, and some of them are actually broken off. Uh, hold on. There, is it there? No, hold on. There, these two. Those two there are actually broken off. Um, so again, I'm quite surprised to see that that drove nicely like that. Now I've, I've got second gears and I've got sleeves. Um, the only problem is this is a Type A box. So there's, there's a slight difference in the synchros and the hubs. So I have to do a little bit of modifications to make the later type sleeves fit, which is the only sleeves I can get. Uh, third and fourth gear, same story. They're, they're, the synchros are the old type um, and they're ever so slightly down, but not anything I'd be too concerned about. If you wanted to upgrade to the latest ones, we can do that. The dog ring, the dog teeth, you can see they've had a little bit of use, but nothing I'd be concerned about at this stage and then the same for the sleeve you can see it's been used but uh, it's not by any stretch of imagination worn out so this is third side you see they're still nice and sharp these three here they do have a slightly different profile so they will look more worn out than those ones there and then the fourth side Force a bit better. So I'd be happy to run that again. Uh, sixth gear. So same story. These. This is one part synchro. It's just one piece, unlike the others where they have the three parts. Fifth, sixth, and reverse just have one part. Again, same story. When they're new, they're flush. You can just see. It's just becoming under flush. They're totally worn out when this face touches that. So the closer this gets to that gear, the more worn out they are. But you can still see there's a good millimetre or so of uh, movement there. Um, but as you can see, it, it is starting to wear down, but it's a bit touch and go, that one, whether I'd really want to use it again or not. It depends how perfect you want to make this. And it's exactly the same story for fifth or the input shaft. You can just see there, it's just a little bit under flush. Um, but I've got them if you wanted to replace them, they're not too expensive. And then the input shaft, as I showed you before, is quite corroded, but that, that won't cause a problem. Um, I can vapor blast that and bring it all up to new. Um, fifth and sixth hub and sleeve is absolutely fine. Very rarely see them worn out. All the bearings are fine, there's nothing on them I'd be worried about. And then the shaft, which is all about the select shaft, if you look closely, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see it. You see the little pretty corroded hole there and there, that's right where the seal sits. So if we run this, and there's some more there, there you see, that's the corrosion which has caused that. If we run this, that is likely to leak. Obviously, it's only going to leak at the moment in time where it's on here. Um, eventually it will leak so i have got another one of them here which i've cleaned up it's not perfect but it's considerably better than your, than your one with no no holes in it um so i'll put a little price together now what um an ideal situation and, and possibilities we can do for you thanks so keep in mind that this price point is based off of back then when he did my transmission and I thought it was extremely reasonable considering how hard it is to get parts for these transmissions nowadays and the fact that everything's discontinued. So I thought this was really reasonable. We went ahead and replaced the second gear. He had uh, reconditioned gears, which looked really good condition considering they're reconditioned. And he actually went ahead and mounted my transmission in his car and gave it a test drive for a week to make sure it was good before sending it back to me. I thought that was extremely nice of him. On top of that, he vapor hones or vapor blasts the whole case 
which results in it looking better than new, which I was extremely happy to see. And it was just nice getting all these updated pictures on the progress that was being made. And then, like I said, he mounted it in his car and then test drove it for a week before sending it back to me to make sure it was good. All right, check that out. That came out so good. I am amazed at how well this thing looks. Highly, highly recommend them to work on a V160 if you guys have one that needed any work done. This is just insane to see in person. It looks so good. It looks better than new. Uh, so yeah, this actually isn't even paint or anything. This is the raw aluminum and because raw aluminum is very porous We are going to go ahead or I'm going to go ahead and spray some clear coat on this thing So I'll start masking some of this stuff off and get some clear coats right here. We go All right, it is the next day the clear coat isn't super hard yet, but it is definitely hard enough to touch I'm just gonna leave it right here on this little stand and stuff for a few days while the clear coat keeps uh, curing but man, it looks so good. It's almost a shame that it's going to be underneath the car and no one's ever going to see it because how good it looks. Wow. What's up, guys? So this is pretty exciting. Moving on to the next thing for my car. We got the engine loaded up. Off to neighbor racing. Here we go. Let's go, guys. So a link to this build thread will be in the description below. Um, I just wanted to share real quickly. I previously took on a Scythe neighbor's car. Well, I gave him a really good deal restoring his car with the thought process that he was going to, in return, do my engine. I guess somewhere along the lines, things got miscommunicated and it resulted in a very minimal amount of communication from him resulting in a two-year hiatus of nothing happening to my engine it seemed like and as a result this is what unfolded so one year after driving off the motor uh, i guess this falls on me for having poor communication on when to expect the engine to actually be done now on top of that i did pay a, a su substantial amount of the bill up front uh thinking that that would help buy the parts for the engine and get things going and so right here is actually past the two-year mark. So I decided enough is enough. I'm just going to cut my losses and move on. And I finally get an update. After receiving the engine back, I decided that I didn't feel comfortable with the lack of communication during the engine build process. So I took it to another friend to have him inspect it. So I dropped the engine off with Kyle Blair and he dove right into it and this is what we found. The valve springs were BC single kit when I thought it was getting GSC. The welds on the timing gear have all cracked completely through. You can see there a little bit better in that picture. The incorrect uh, head studs were used. Here's a photo of a custom made timing tab. A couple of the rods had some pretty bad corrosion on them. The cylinders weren't honed. The head and the block both also weren't decked. Uh, there was other small stuff like the cams had damage to them. And other stuff like the oil pump uh, bolts not being torqued down or the oil pickup not being torqued down. The wrong size O-rings were used on the oil pump. Uh, stuff like that. Quick video of what we going on with the mains here. So, number one, there's some tension left in the register. You see it doesn't go in. Two through six are loose in the registers. And some of them are actually so bad you can hear them rock back and forth. And then obviously number seven is still has a little tension left in it. All right, more fun for Mr. Paul. So what we have here, let's see if we can get some light on there. Just quick check the valve job, quick lap on a couple of exhaust valves, and 
You can see here that we've only got contact on about half of the seat. This one actually came in all the way around, so that's cool. Go over to our intake valves here. This is a fresh build, mind you. That is what the intake valve looks like. Got another good one here. Deep pitting on that. That valve's going in the trash. I haven't even checked these to see if they're straight yet. Another one. That's going in the trash. And this was in an assembled engine that was given to the customer. Let's pull a couple of these valves out. We got a nice deep step on the seats from just having them hogged out. Those got to be replaced. This is not good. So it became really apparent that that uh, engine block that Saif had given me was actually not even my block as it was in a motor that was run really hard. I asked him for my original block back. Unfortunately, he no longer had it and it must've been used in someone else's car and someone else's build, which is very disappointing because I would love to have the block that came with my car in my car. Uh, that one really hurt. I did manage to get my money back from him in exchange for giving him the parts that he installed back. So I got some of the money I spent up front back. Unfortunately, again, I'm missing out on that block and the head seemed like it was pretty shot. So I ended up having to buy a replacement block and a new head and we started getting all a bunch of new parts again. And so I went with Kyle's recommendation on a lot of the stuff for my specific goals in mind. I'm not trying to make like an insane car here. Uh, but yeah, uh, we went ahead and sent out the pistons to get coated, uh, bill and mains from real street, just cause I thought, you know, why not at this point? And Kyle started assembling the motor. So here is some clips from that. And as you can see, the communication and proof of being worked on is much better than previously done or shown. Uh, I also painted a set of the timing covers because I thought that'd be a nice accent for the motor. And then the motor was done. So here is how Cow delivers the motor when it's done, all wrapped up and includes a build sheet. All right, I have an engine finally. Uh, I got so excited that I had to put the intake manifold on, had to put the turbo on. Uh, it looks so good on the block. I'm so excited for that. There's still a lot of stuff left to do, clean up some of the accessories, paint the, the upper timing cover, the valve cover needs a custom finish, et cetera, et cetera. So there's still a lot of stuff to do and I'm hoping to have my car running next year. Fingers crossed on that one. We all know how that goes, unfortunately. I will leave all of the information for Kyle below along with uh, Paul Cheshire and Alex at BPA. Uh, highly recommend those guys. Huge shout out again to Kyle for making the engine a possibility. He was so kind and communicative and gave me his expertise on what he thought my goals should be and what that would look like. I plan on working with him in the future to help me finish the engine. Until then, there's still, like I said, a lot left for me to do. So we'll get cracking on it and hopefully I can have more videos updating you guys in the future. 
Until then, leave a comment below what you guys think, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.